you know, the life before COVID for me seems very abnormal now. This seems like a normal life. I think this is the best part of my life right now. It's made me introspect so much, so much. Everyone's business got hit, all of us. But the family time that we've gotten, it's made us reflect so much on, you know, the life before COVID for me seems very abnormal now. This seems like a normal life. And when I look at my patients and all, because of course, we're still consulting with patients. A lot of them are Luke. We thought that was a normal life. We're beginning to feel that this is normal to go to sleep on time, to eat our meals on time, not to be worried throughout the week what we should wear at Saturday night's party and, you know, be stressed out and stuff. So I think everyone has a perspective. For me, the world is healing right now. I think if we go on, if we come out of lockdown and go back to our own lifestyles of consumerism and stuff, something worse is going to happen. I think we have to learn from this. You know, people who were socialites are learning that to find their self-worth without being dependent on, social, on socializing. It's beautiful. Everyone who thought I need to go out and eat all my meals in restaurants are today learning to eat home-cooked food and they're enjoying it. They're enjoying it. You know, so people thought I only need a gym, only then can I have a great body. People are learning to work out at home. So I think the people who are not wallowing in self-pity and in fear of what's happening and are really looking at the silver lining in this, they are going to come out of this very, very strong. People are learning to appreciate family time. People are also realizing voids in their life that, you know, maybe my relationship isn't good because I can't be with my spouse all the time. I need distractions. I need to go to office. I need to go out. So, you know, there's so much of learning. We can either use it the right way or the wrong way. But I think this is a wake-up call for every person and the world. The biggest learning is to show, do we have health care or do we have sick care? The best health care that we go on bragging about that our world has cannot take care of a simple virus. The focus should have always been on immunity. No one heard the word immunity until a virus happened. So where is it going back to? Preventive medicine. What should we do to prevent illness? Everyone is like, oh, I have health insurance. I have contacts in Breach Candy, Leela Buddy. When I'm sick, I'll get the best bed. No one cares about that. Today, you can't get a bed no matter who you are in the hospital. The point is, we're learning that health is our responsibility. You can have the best nutritionists, the doctors in the world. You can have all the money in the world. But if you don't do what your body requires, which is your nutrition, your exercise, your sleep, your emotional wellness, nothing can save you. So I think that's the biggest thing that the world is going to get. That, you know, people's faith has been shaken, you know, completely shook up. That no one can cure us now except ourselves, our own immune system. And I think that is the biggest learning that people, if they take, health will actually get better in the future once people take personal accountability and responsibility. So the first thing is changing our mindset about health, about stress. Everyone thinks everyone is stressed. Everyone isn't. You know, what we need to understand is it is a mindset and belief. Okay, stress is an emotion. An emotion is dependent on what we think and what we feel. As simple as that. Things that stress me will not stress you. Things that stress you don't have to stress me. So it is not stress. It is our mindset around that. Everyone has been dealt the same hand of lockdown. Okay? So everyone's stress point is literally the same. Now, how much you've taken that, how much you fuel it with more and more news and negativity is exactly how your stress grows. I tell people, people say, oh, I'm so stressed out. I watch the news. And then stop watching the news. It's as simple as that. If you can't handle the news, don't watch it. Just don't watch it. You see, fear is a wasted emotion. When we have fear in us, we have to use it to motivate us into action. Like, okay, my business may close down. What can I do? Instead of wallowing in self-pity, instead of becoming a victim, there are so many people whose businesses have been closed down right now, but they are thinking of new businesses. They're investing in new skills. They're doing new things. There's a large population that is wallowing in self-pity. They mm. talk to 10 friends every day. Did you watch this? Oh no, this is going to happen. You're just digging a spiral. You're, you're spiraling deeper. By talking, it's not going to solve the problem. By feeling sad, is not going to solve a problem. The only thing that's going to solve your problem is action. But when you're in victim mode, you can't move to action because all your energy is being sucked up by negativity. Yeah. So I think everyone has their own fears. No one has it better or worse. No one at all. It is different for everyone. Some people's businesses will thrive right now. Some will shut down. Some people's health will get worse right now. Some people will get better. But my point is, it's a very personal thing. What is your mindset when it comes to stress? 
most people, the things they fear never come true in their lifetime, but they feed it more and more. And that stress becomes a story and then an illusion. And then it becomes you. It becomes you completely. And we know today stress is connected with every disease on this planet from cancer to low immunity. So do something about it. I'm not saying you have to sit and meditate. You have to start distracting yourself from the things that stress you out. You have to learn two words, acceptance and letting go. If you ever want to sort out stress in your life, there are only two words. You can sit in the Himalayas and meditate all you want. You can attend every self-help class that exists in the world. But if you cannot practice acceptance and letting go, those classes are useless. Yeah. When we learn a class, even our own yoga practice, meditation, it teaches us to look within. Why can't I accept this person's behavior? Why can't I let go of this loss that I had? It comes down to our ego and pride. And that becomes our stress. We're so afraid that our ego and pride are bruised or protected. That uses a lot of your stress. It stresses you out so much. But when we learn to accept and let go, that fine, I've put on weight. I don't fit into my clothes. All right, let me move into action. Okay, but you, I can't accept this. I've done this. I've never put on weight before and I did. I ate only one dessert. You're in denial. You can't move into action. As simple as that. You get a cancer. The first cure towards your cancer is acceptance. That fine. I got it. Go through denial. Go through that. But finally, to get better, you have to accept. And only when you accept it can you begin action of recovery, the right treatments and everything that you have to do. So it comes down to acceptance and letting go. Like I said, everyone's been the dealt, dealt the same hand. Now, what do you choose to do? Who do you choose to be in a stressful situation? So everyone says, everyone has stress. Yeah, but what are you going to do about it? You don't just accept it. If you want to be like everyone, then accept it like everyone. But if you want to be different and make a change, then you've got to do something different.